Hi everybody, this is Chad the Gaming Dad here, once again with another Father Knows Best, and this episode we are going to be discussing how in the actual hell did we get where we are now in video games. Take over. As of right now, we have quite the divide in video games. I mean, there's a line going right down the middle where on one side we have AAA, AAA publishers like EA, Ubisoft, those kind of guys. And then on the other side, we've got all the indies. And also, a lot of Nintendo stuff seems to be on that side too. So let's take a look. This week, we get the infamous Battlefield 2, Star Wars Battlefield 2. And that's really what's making me want to make this video, is that it's probably the worst example of AAA going as far as they ever have to actually try to just stick their hand right in your wallet and pull the money out. And this is coming from a guy who is a huge Star Wars fan, a huge shooter fan. Everything about that game should be something that I like. And the visuals look great. I've seen some reviews now. I watched Victor Lucas's review on Reviews on the Run. If you don't watch his stuff or subscribe on YouTube, he's a great one. Uh, he's been around forever. This guy was one of my main inspirations for even doing a YouTube channel. He was on G4 back in the day before there was even really YouTube channels and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm watching this guy, who I really respect and enjoy watching his stuff, and he gave the game a 9 based on the gameplay, based on the visuals, the sound, all the things that you should judge a game on. He did make mention of the loot boxes and stuff and said, yeah, it taints it a little bit, puts a little blemish on the game and stuff like that. But to me, I, I don't see it as just a little blemish. There's no way that I could score that game as high as he did. He gave it a nine and yeah, a nine looking at the visuals and the gameplay. Sure. It probably is a nine, but let me put it to you this way. Imagine you go out for like your birthday dinner or a special night out, a uh, date night or something like that. And you go to the most expensive, the best restaurant in town, gourmet meal, right? You sit down, they present you the plate and it is the most amazing looking dinner you ever saw. It's beautiful. It's a 10 out of 10 dinner, right? And then the chef runs out of the back and says, aha, uh -huh, but wait, hang on a second. Drops trow craps mm -hmm. right on top of your beautiful dinner and then says okay now here it's still a 10 out of 10 right that's what i see these loot boxes doing they are taking a big steaming pile of shit on top of what could have been one of the best games ever and that's probably a pretty strong way of describing it but that's the truth i don't care how good the game is if it's got a big steaming pile sitting on top of it in the form of the loot boxes and stuff. I can't do it. I'm out. Every time you turn on the game, every time you touch it, it's going to be like, hey, hey, you want to buy this loot box? You want to buy that? You want to buy this? The only game I've bought recently that does this, and good on them, I guess, fool me once, right, is Shadow of War. I loved Shadow of Mordor, so I got Shadow of War. The game itself is very, very repetitive basically the same exact thing as the last game in a good way but also in a bad way and then every time you turn it on it's not like you can't see this stuff they say oh it's optional it's optional you don't have to buy it you don't have to buy it you can earn it in game they don't let you know that yeah you can earn it in game but it's going to take you eons to get the stuff that you could just pay for today uh luckily in that game you don't need to do it as much as you will in a game like Battlefront, because at least it's a single-player game. If you take forever to get through the whole thing, then cool, good on you. But on an online multiplayer-focused game like Battlefront, it's all about who has the edge. It's all about who has the better gun. Because even if you have two people that are evenly matched skill-wise, that game has very, very big differences in the weapons and your armor and all that other kind of stuff. I mean, we're talking one or two shots to kill somebody versus five shots and you're not down yet. That's a big difference. 
when it's a quick shooter like that and you both are coming around the corner, you're coming around the corner, you turn and you both fire at the same time. Boom, 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 boom. Or a pew, pew, pew. But you're already dead because you didn't buy the gun. His gun kills you in two shots. Your your gun takes five. Well, you're, you're three shots shy, dude. You're dead. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. And that's why it's pay to win. And they say, oh, no, no, it's not pay to win. It's not pay to win. We've we've made it so that it takes longer. You know, you can buy all of the weapons and stuff, but you have to play longer for them to be activated. It ain't that much longer, dude. It's not that much longer. And everybody will eventually have played that long in not that long a time. And the guys who paid will have all the stuff. The guys who did not pay will be getting killed and the game will be no fun. It will be boring. I don't care how shiny it looks. I don't care. I don't care how great the graphics are, the sound, anything else. It will not be fun. Period. If I was going to do a review fun or run on Star Wars Battlefront 2, I would say, yeah, sure. Looks really fun, but it's not fun at all. And you must run from all the microtransactions. So the question that I'm asking here today and the thing I'm talking about besides my rant on all of that, I'm so pissed off about that. And the fact that it's in everything else, we'll get into that in a second. What I'm talking about is that there's this great divide and as hard as it is for me to do, you know, to pass on games that look so good like Battlefront, my heart says, go get it, right? But my mind, when I think about it, says, don't touch it. Don't go anywhere near. Yes. Yes. It looks great. Let's go all the way back. How did we get to where we are now? Once upon a time, there used to be a thing called video games that you could just buy the game. There was no DLC. There was no patch. There were no microtransactions. The companies sold you a system and they sold you a game. The game would go into the system. You play it. That's it. If they want to make more money, they had to make a better game and sell it to more people. Period. That's the way it should be for just about anything. But in society today, it, you know, no matter what type of business you're talking about, no matter what you're talking about doing, everything is cheapened anymore. Everything has been made cheap. Cheap and easy, man. Cheap and easy. That's how we like it. So what they've done is instead of doing the hard work by making a better game and selling it more because everybody has to have it. Everybody has to have it because it's the greatest game. That's how you make more money. No. Now, they're hoping to make the game look really great and then rip off as many suckers as they can. That's what they're hoping for. They want to rip you off. That's how their business model is set up now. Rip off business model. So, let's go back. Like I said, there used to be games like that. And then all of a sudden, game companies after a while said to themselves, hang on a minute. We've been selling these things for 50 bucks for ever. It's not 1980s anymore. 50 bucks doesn't go as far as it used to. Yeah, we're selling 10 times as many of the games now than we used to, but forget about that. Dude, why are we still selling these for 50 bucks? So they, uh, they said that to themselves and then they said, wait a minute, we can't charge more than 50 because people will go, wait, games have always been 50. I don't want to pay more than 50 for the game. People would vote with their wallets. People would not buy the games if they cost a lot more than what they were used to. So we get some of these things. Pulled out a couple games here. The games aren't all that interesting. Grand Slam Tennis, not not interesting. Uh, Ghost Recon Future Soldier, nah, not really one of the best. It's okay though. But the reason I pulled these out was because I still had the papers inside that represented the first effort of video game companies to try to monetize a little bit more. Yes, we're talking about the elusive online pass. Hey, steal the code, man. Steal the code. You can play some online if you want to play Grand Slam Tennis 2. And also the Uplay Passport. Don't lose this card, it says. Don't lose this card. Your free Uplay Passport code will unlock unlimited access to the online multiplayer portion. Oh, you mean like what we used to get for free? Oh, okay. Well, this will unlock unlimited access to something that 
we didn't used to have to pay for. Okay, I get it. There's servers, there's things that you have to pay for to keep online to make things run and all that kind of stuff. But <sighs> give me a break, guys. You know, one of my favorite sayings in the world is don't piss on me and tell me it's raining. And that's what these companies are doing these days, telling you, it costs a lot more money to make these games. We got to make money somehow. We're just poor little video game companies that can't make any money. Oh, my God. Now, you're pissing on us and you're telling us it's raining, but we know it's piss. Ha <laughs> ha. I know it's piss. So, where do we go from here? There was backlash. People hated it. I'm looking at the Wikipedia about it right now. It looks like they started this back in 2009-ish. Here's a quote here that says that EA began implementing online passes in its games as part of an initiative known as Project $10. Project $10. Mass Effect 2 used an online pass. Okay. Then they announced in 2010 that beginning with Tiger Woods PGA Tour 10, all future EA Sports titles would have the online pass. Project $10. Give me a break, Project $10. Now it's Project $100. Okay, so going back to Project $10, there were two reasons that they gave, you know, for doing this. Number one was, oh, okay, games cost a lot more to make. Oh, this is just to try to stop piracy because, you know, if you pirate a game, you won't get the pass. Um, most games would include the pass for free, quote, for free, if you bought it brand new. But you see, companies started trying to fight back against places like GameStop and other used game stores at that point because they they sat back and they realized, wait a minute, we're not getting the full profits off of these things if they resell them. And that's true. Sure. But that's just the way business goes. Make a better game. Everybody will buy it. Right? So they were fighting back against the used games. They were fighting back against, quote, piracy. And they were also trying to fight back against the increasing costs of making games. Oh, heavens no. So that was their first try. Then there was all kinds of backlash. People saw it as a cash grab, which it was, which it is. And they fought back. They said, this is bull. We're not buying it. So they said, okay, okay, don't worry. We'll take it away. And the fans rejoiced. Yay! No more online passes. And at that same time was when the push of DLC started coming at us. It's a wave. It's like a tidal wave of DLC. First, the DLC was a couple dollars. Then it was five dollars. Then it was ten dollars. And then Call of Duty started doing fifteen dollar DLCs four times a year per game. And then they said, well, you know, you could pay $60 for all four of them. Or here's a season pass for 50 bargain time, saving the money. The more you buy, the more you save. These are all stupid things that marketing companies say to get you to pay more money. So now we've got the $50 season pass for pretty much every single online shooter you know whether it's call of duty or battlefield or battlefront or battle battle your ass i don't care they all have 50 dollars season passes and then some of the other games that weren't even the online shooters that couldn't just kind of rope people into buying more dlc they started having season passes these were the on disc DLC type of things where they built all these things into the game. They put them on the disc. They were there. You already bought it. It's on the disc. Won't access it until you pay more money because they can't make the games more. Now they're $60. They can't make the games more than $60 up front because people won't buy it. If it's just the base game for $60, but they're charging you 60 for the game. And then 25 30 40 dollars sometimes 50 dollars for the for the season pass so they're already getting 110 out of you per game that's what they wanted in the first place people complained about dlc people don't like dlc they see it as a ripoff oh, it costs too much money it costs too much money meanwhile the guys 
over on iPhone or on Android or I, you know, any kind of mobile device, they decided, hey, we're going to make games and we're just going to give them away for free. People said, crazy, free games, crazy. You grab the free games. I tried them. I don't play them at all anymore. I won't touch them. I can't do a thing with them because... All I see them is, I don't care what skin they put on it, whether they put Star Wars on there or Simpsons or whatever any of these free-to-play games are, they can get all the supermodels they want to do all the commercials on TV. They can get Arnold Schwarzenegger to do all the commercials they want on TV. Ultimately, they're exactly the same game over and over and over again, just basically trying to hook you in to a system that will go so slow that you pay money to hurry it up because you're into the game. Ah, it's only $2. Ah, it's only a dollar. It's only $2. And they're making millions and millions of dollars doing this, but at least the game up front is free, but I'm not interested in that game because it's not a real game to me. Those games. Yeah. They might be something fun to play for a minute, but again, all I see them as is dangling a carrot on a stick. They're like, here, play this game for a while. Pretty fun, huh? Yeah. I like this game. This was fun. Hold on, I want to go there, but I can't go there. It says I can't go there for five minutes. Oh, wait, but for a dollar, I can go there now. Hey, it's only a dollar. That's what I see those games as. And that's what they are. And so the companies like EA and these guys, they said to themselves, okay, wait, we tried to do Project $10 back in the day. People didn't like that. So we got rid of that, got rid of that. Then we started selling them some DLC. Yeah, and that wasn't Project $10 anymore. It turned into Project $50. Yeah, they were buying that for a while, uh, and then they got pissed off about that. Hey, how can we generate some more camaraderie, get, get, get some great press, get some great PR? Hey, I got an idea. Let's tell them all the DLC is free. <laughs> all the DLC is free, right? Yeah, we're just going to give that crap away for free. But now we're going to sell them loot boxes because... If they get all the DLC for free, they're going to want to play with their friends. And if their friends have the better gun than them, then ha ha, we've got them. They're going to pay. They're going to pay. I watched a video from Jim Sterling recently. He talked about how there's a company out there that helps bigger companies monetize their games more. And the quote that they came up with was turn players into payers, players into payers. I swear, it's like the Matrix anymore. All of us are just sitting in pods, and all we are, instead of generating electricity for the Matrix, we just crap out dollar bills. That's what we're there for. They, they want to turn players into payers. They're going to put us in a pod and squish us, and all the dollars will poop right out for them. That's what they're hoping we do. So that's how we got to where we are. It's all a game of, what do they call it, smoke and mirrors? Stuff like that where they say, okay, we've heard the fans, we listen. We heard the fans, we listen. We're going to go ahead and shut off that DLC. No more will you pay for DLC. As they slide the, the loot boxes in behind. They push the loot boxes in and they're like, oh, but well, we have to have loot boxes. And then people say, why are you putting in these crappy loot boxes? Angry Joe interviewed these guys. Also, I watched Victor Lucas interview one of these guys, the guys from Dice. And they specifically asked them straight up, why do you guys have to put the loot boxes in there? And they say stupid things like, oh, well, they're in there because most people tend to go towards one kind of character rather than another. And if we give them these boxes, then they unlock the star cards for other different kind of characters then maybe they'll try those too, and they'll get more out of the game this way. We're doing it for the fans. We're doing it for the players, the pay uh, payers, the, pl the player payers. Oops, didn't mean to say payers. That's their answer. That's a bullshit answer. That they want us to experience different characters in the game. So what they're basically saying is, you're going to play the game, you're going to pick the character you like, if you can even get him, from what I've also seen, most of the main characters, you can't even be Darth Vader until you either buy a whole bunch of money to unlock him or play for an ungodly amount of time to unlock him through gameplay. How can you have a Star Wars game with Darth Vader in it and 
you can't be Darth Vader without paying extra money. It's almost like they knew that a lot of people really like Darth Vader and want to play as him, and so they hid him behind a paywall. Hmm. I guess that might be what they were thinking. Craziness. Yeah, they're telling us that they want us to play as different characters. They're doing us a favor by walling off parts of the game. Nah. I played a lot of games back in the day that had a whole bunch of characters on them. I think they were even called Star Wars Battlefront, too. There was a there was one, and then there was two. And recently on PC, Battlefront 2, the old one, has been put back online. And from, hmm, from what I remember, I believe there's a whole bunch of characters in that game that you can choose from. And none of them are walled off behind anything. You can just pick who you want to be. Crazy. <laughs> Those gamers, they're so stupid. They don't know what they want. Picking who they want to be right from the beginning. Craziness. So that's that's where we are. That's how we got to where we are today in games. And the divide that I see, that's, that's kind of nice to see a divide. Because if it all was going that direction, I'm done. I'm not, I'm out. Peace out. Playing retro games and nothing more. But... The divide that I'm seeing that's at least nice is the fact that we do get games every now and then, like Wolfenstein 2, that one, single player only, no multiplayer. There is a season pass, though. They do have you with the season pass for 25 bucks. It's half price season pass, but they couldn't completely get away from it. They still had to put the season pass in there. But there are no loot boxes, there are no microtransactions, there's just the one transaction. Which, honestly, for what you get, I don't mind paying for a DLC season pass if I'm that into the game and I want the extra stuff. That's fine, I'm paying for something, I'm getting it. With loot boxes, you're paying for something and you may not even get anything. You might get nothing. That's, that's where a lot of people are calling it gambling. It totally is gambling, because you'll try and you'll go, ah, next time. Spin the wheel again, right? But it's nice to see that games like that, Wolfenstein are coming out that buck the trend a little bit. It's nice to see that the Nintendo Switch is doing so well. They don't really have a whole lot of microtransactions on there. <laughs> microtransactions. Most of their games do have some kind of season pass anymore. Even Nintendo's bought into the season pass thing. Um, but it's just... It's not not quite as money grubbing. I'm not giving them a, a free pass on their season passes though, too, because honestly, you know, I'm playing Fire Emblem Warriors, and the pass includes a whole bunch of extra warriors and this and that. Uh, that can all have been in the game from the get go. That totally could have been in the game from the get go, but they have to make their money the same stupid way everybody else is making money. I don't know. That was just kind of a Stupid rant. I don't even know if I made a whole lot of points there, but I just wanted to ask how we got to where we are. And I keep telling everybody that I know, and I've said stuff on the channel before too, that I don't think I'm going to get the next gen of systems. If there's a PS5 coming out or an Xbox XXX, Triple X, or whatever the hell they're going to call it coming out someday... I'm just not interested anymore because most games that are coming out now have all of these sneaky little ways that they're trying to nickel and dime you to death. Hell, the Call of Duty game that just came out, World War II, it's got the loot boxes, it's got all that, but they even have a section in there where you get credit for watching other people open up loot boxes. What the hell is that? They want you to go online as if you're going to go online and play a game, not play the game, log in, and spectate other people opening loot boxes so that you can see all the cool crap that those guys are getting so that maybe you'll want to buy some loot boxes too because that was really fun watching them open theirs. How about I open some of my own? That's stupid. Now, maybe I'm just old. And if, if, if that's what it is, then that's what it is, but... Man, is that some dumb, dumb shit or what? I don't get it. <laughs> I never will. Thank God. I will never get this. Hopefully, my kids, as I'm raising them, 
you know, in this room with, with all these games and stuff, and I'm trying to teach them all about the retro stuff and everything. Hopefully they won't buy into this. I mean, I certainly won't be giving them my credit card to use when they get old enough to want this stuff. So my God, it's ruining gaming. It's ruining gaming for me. Like I said, I am pretty sure I'm not going to buy into the next gen because it's just going to be more and more and more of this, but I may be out of this gen pretty soon if they don't stop all this crap there's a bunch of games this season that i am not gonna buy i didn't buy call of duty don't really care they put the loot boxes in forget it i'm not buying star wars as much as i want to just because i'm not gonna be one of their you know test subjects i don't want to sign up to be one of their people that they manipulate to see how far they can push us before we say enough i've already said enough done with that some of the stuff i will be buying i will buy doom on the switch even though i already have it on the ps4 because that game was basically my game of the year when it came out love that game and i love the switch i love the fact that i can play it away from the tv go lay down someplace or if i'm hanging off i have to go to some place somebody's house or whatever and i just want to hang out but everybody's talking and I'm just sitting there, you know, you can play something. I'll buy it just because I want to have it on the Switch. And that's that's fine. That's how they make more money. They make a better game. And they make you want to buy it because it's a better game. Not because they tricked me into buying something. I bought the Switch because it was unique. Something different to play games on. A new way to play them. And now they're putting some of my all-time favorite games on it. Of course I will buy them a second time. Because the game is good enough to warrant the money. That's how you make money. And you don't turn out to be such a big asshole. That's how it is. Make a better game. Give us something for our money. I don't know. So that's about it for my rant today. Like I said, I'm not sure how many points I made, if I made any... But those are my thoughts on the whole thing. We're just sitting in a crazy time and hopefully somebody comes along and makes some sense. But beware, if they take loot boxes out, what will they replace them with? Every time they took something out so far that we didn't like, they replaced it with something worse. So let's keep an eye out for that and hope that things don't get even worse. Because right now, I'm not interested in these games. And that's... That's unprecedented for me. <laughs> I'm usually interested in all of them. And I'm not interested in these because of all of this stuff. So, till next time, remember, you never outgrow video games. My name's Chad the Gaming Dad. And thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. So long, everybody. Thanks again for watching. If you like that video, please press like and subscribe. I love hearing from you guys, so leave your comments and any suggestions down below. Remember, there's tons of other gamers out there just like you and me, and they also know that you never outgrow video games. Feel free to share these videos all over social media, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever you use. This channel is for all of us. Let's make sure they know that they are not alone. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.